see the flag. There is no flag on that one. Every American can picture it in their own mind. Okay, so, so we, we don't have any flag, so we just say let's, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. If you don't, for those that don't know me, I am I, I am Marie Pico, and um, I am instead for uh, Mark, who is who is out of town. I can't tell if it's on. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna project. Okay. Um, our guest introductions today will be by Deborah Hick. Deborah Ricks. Come on up, Deborah. Thank you. I'd like to welcome all our guests. I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the fellowship. Um, those that we'd like to welcome are Richard Brokey, Ross Freeman, and Robert Zidell. Zidell. Z okay. Zidell. Zidell. Thank you. Um, we uh, hope you enjoy your time here. We hope you consider coming back. And we hope at some point in time you might consider joining our club. Thank you. All right, so then I also get to do the um, Rotary Minute. So I hope you guys have all enjoyed this beautiful weather outside. Isn't it fabulous that spring has finally sprung? Now, I would like to take you a little back in history about where we are, where we've come. So in uh, December, or December, in January, we experienced a unique weather system called the Polar um, can you guys tell me what was that called then? Okay, everyone that said Vortex, would you please stand up? <laughs> okay. Oh, and remain standing. Sorry. Stand up and remain standing. Okay, so then after that, we had Groundhog Day. And I can never remember, is it the second or the fourth? Can I ask? Second? Okay, everyone that said second, please help stand or continue to stand. Okay, so then we had that and that darn Groundhog P, which is not his name. What's his name? <laughs> All right, please stand. Yeah. He came up and he said it was going to be an early spring. Well, then spring sprang. And what day was spring this year? March sometime? Okay, all those that helped him with that, please stand up. Um, so early spring, but then ha ha jokes on us because what did it do? It blizzard in April. Well, finally, we are here, and spring has finally sprung. These last couple weeks have been totally beautiful. So as spring has sprung, it's a new beginning, uh, rebirth, and in that, we celebrate new and different things. One of the things that I think we celebrate is the ways we can be involved in Rotary. And if you look around, these are all the people, and some of them aren't standing, that helped me with my presentation. I encourage you, when Rotary sends out the call to help with service projects, to stand up for the service projects and get involved. Just think how much help I needed in this presentation and how you facilitated all of that. If you can do this with my presentation, just imagine what you can do out in the community. Thank you all very much. That was lovely. Oh, that was wonderful. Um, yes, we are at the Dillon House, a place for history. And we are going to have a wonderful convention on the 25th and the uh, 26th and the 27th. Um, so, so very excited about that. Um, first, I want to direct you to uh, the April feature charity is the Jayhawk Area Boy Scout Council. Um, and this is for camp scholarships for the summer of 2019. Camp scholarships provide up to 50% of the cost of day camp or resident camp, so please give generously. Announcements. Um, 
We would like to, anybody who has received a friend X, I would, we would love to hear if you had an opportunity to receive a, a friend X. Anybody like to share? Okay, I will share. Um, I have received two, and one I received at the beginning of the week, um, and it is a beautiful necklace, and if I was wearing something that showed off a necklace, I would have worn it today, but I believe that is because my friend X knew that this week is my birthday, and so I want to thank that person, whoever you are, because that brought joy to my life. And um, it made me just feel a little special this week. Um, and uh, it was just a great way to build fellowship. And so um, I will be celebrating my birthday tomorrow with my Rotarians when I go to the convention. Um, I'd also like to invite uh, Karen Hiller up to speak for a moment about a wonderful opportunity that the community is engaged in that really talks about our history in Topeka. Thank you, Marie. You should have a small versions of this chart on your table. Um, this year is the 65th anniversary of the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision. It's the Brown versus the Topeka Board of Education decision we might all recall. And that decision and all of the vision with it and the actions before and since, I would say, um, we would all agree, reflects our heart, our heritage, and our future. The events over this 10 days, which have been put together by a group of volunteers, the Brown v. Board Sumner Legacy Trust, with a lot of partners like TPAC, the library, others who are here in this room, Brown v. Board, um, has a week's worth of events, uh, really 10 days worth of events. There are symposia that start on the 10th, which is called Brown v. Board 1954, Hear Our Voices, which will include the voices of people who were plaintiffs, era folks, students at the all-black schools at the time of the decision, up until May 17th, which is Brown v. Board 2019, Real Talk Next Steps, which is intended to be a full community-wide conversation about where we are, how we've been doing over that 65 years, and what, the, what, what success would look like if we were to engage in a community-wide initiative to move forward. That whole 10 days is laced with activities, a new theater program by Tyson Williams, a new dance program by Stephen Massey, Oral History Day at the library, an exhibit at, and a gallery talk at the Mulvane, bus tours for art and cultures via murals, as well as the history of the Brown v. Board case, sprinkled throughout the time, a, a um, debut, which you heard about, I think, a week or two ago, of Eugene Williams' new documentary. It will debut on Wednesday night at the Brown v. Board site and then have its first airing on Thursday night on TV. Thursday is a film day at the Jayhawk Theater, five different civil rights films, the fifth of which will be Black Klansman, Oscar award-winning Black Klansman, and Kevin Wilmot will be there afterward to give uh, a gallery talk. Um, so please look this over. Let me know if you want more copies. I have some more copies at the table. Uh, email me if you've got something you want to push out. You can find it online at www.bvb65.com. Visit Topeka, set up a whole microsite for it, and also on Facebook under events. Thank you. I can tell she was looking for me. I was. Um, okay, so we have a special presentation because, as I said, we have a, a special event that's happening over the next couple of days. And so I'd like to invite Blanche Park. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay, it's a great day to be a Rotarian. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I wanted to uh, thank everyone for coming today. And as you know, we have our district conference scheduled uh, starting tomorrow. And uh, uh, what I did when I found out that our, our dates was I invited our World uh, Rotary International President to attend. 
And so he said he can't be there. And so he will send us his representative. So we are honored here today to have with us the official Rotary International representative from Fresno, California, and her name is Shirley Grace, and we're so happy to welcome her here with her husband, Richard. So, Shirley. Thank you, Blanche. I have good news, I have bad news, and I have good news. So the good news is that I come from a large club just like you, yes? I have an intimate club of 300, and so I feel right at home here, which is the theme of Blanche's conference. So it's nice to be home. The bad news is my luggage was lost. I don't typically dress like this. But the good news is I was gifted this beautiful Kansas t-shirt yesterday, so I had something appropriate to wear. It reminds me of when I went to Zimbabwe about four years ago and we were delivering wheelchairs. And it's kind of interesting when you go somewhere, they look at you and they say you're a past district governor and they expect you um, probably not to do so much. Uh, it's just kind of one of the expectations. Don't you find that, Larry? Yeah, it, I know, as a director it's even worse, right? But you get there and, and the, she kind of looked at me and she thought, oh, I wonder what I'm going to get out of this person. But the next morning I'm getting dressed and ready to go to the wheelchair delivery and what we're having is a handover there. And what we have is I'm supposed to speak in front of the government officials and all of the hospital officials and there is no electricity. So what do you do as a Rotarian? You throw it in a ponytail and you go and you just go forward with whatever it is. We went on from there that afternoon and she looks at me and we, she says, we're going to the warehouse, we have to tag all these wheelchairs. A container of wheelchairs is 500 wheelchairs. So we walk into this storage facility, there are 500 wheelchairs there. She looks at me and she expects me to not want to do anything and I said, give me the tags. We start three hours later, we're finished with those. The next day we start delivering over half of these wheelchairs, lifting the children into these wheelchairs, putting them together, adjusting them so they fit them specifically. About three o'clock in the afternoon, this wonderful stranger looks at me and she says, you haven't even stopped and you haven't eaten yet. I looked at her and I said, Neither have you, my new friend. And to this day, we're friends always. You know, I had a chance to look over the district uh, reports last night. And I know that you understand the business of Rotary and service above self. For me, it's all about the service. You are up two members, which is a lot for a large club. You're also in the top three for foundation giving. You're also in the top three for each Rotarian giving to the foundation every year. You're also in the top third for Polio Plus donations. Four years ago, when I was Indian and I went to my first polio immunization, I saw a gentleman wheeling across the street and it's a motorized bicycle. His wife is walking in a beautiful pink, baby pink sari next to him. He has his little girl, who's about three years old, riding on this tricycle in front of him and his six-year-old walking beside him. The six-year-old is too <coughs> old for the polio immunization, but I'm able to give his little girl those drops that will prevent her from becoming <coughs> crippled. The most wonderful thing about this was he was a polio survivor. You know, the greatest thing that you do is all of the projects that you do here in your local community and the communities abroad. The reason why I joined Rotary is because of people just like you, not only paving the way, but for the projects that you do in your community, because one of those touched my life. So I want to thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you, and I hope to be able to meet you individually at the district conference. Thank you for the honor and privilege of being here, and God bless your service. Thank you very much, Shirley. Sorry about the luggage. <laughs> Hopefully okay. it shows up in time for tomorrow. Um, and look, you got a brand new t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. Um, I'd like to, uh, moving on to the program, I'd like to welcome Liz Sage to the stage to make the introduction for our program. Good afternoon. 
today I get the pleasure of introducing to you Robert Rath. He is over here at my table. And he is currently the Vice President of KSNT. And he was in Topeka for 14 years in the 80s and 90s. And at that time, he was the general manager of our local Fox affiliate. He has been back for two years now. And in total, he has over 36 years of broadcasting experience. Robert is currently serving on the board and executive board of the Jayhawk Area Council, Boy Scouts of America, the TARP Foundation Board, and is assisting the Capper Foundation with current and future marketing projects. Robert is a proud Rotarian and is heavily involved in programs that provide sho shoes and coats to underprivileged children in the Topeka Public School District. Here today, um, he is here today to talk about the Jefferson Awards. And he has brought this wonderful program to our community here in Northeast Kansas. Robert Rath, if you'll come back. I just want to make sure you know that she has no idea who I am. She met me five minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> she did a wonderful job in, in five minutes of speaking to, me to, to make something up. Um, hopefully you know me. I've been a member for two years. The first time I spoke here, six uh, applications were thrown in my face before I left. Um, so, I, so I signed one of them and, and I joined. Um, today I'm here to speak to you about a new program that we launched in the community. Um, when I first came to Kansas, uh, this time around I, I was uh, greeted very, very early by uh, Matt Pavarnik from the Greater Topeka Partnership. Um, and he had laid out, because he was the newest kid on the block too, and he beat me by about six or eight months, and so he wanted to welcome me. And he laid out everything he was planning to do, um, and then I basically laid out to him what I was planning to do for these stations. Um, and some of the things matched, um, and that's really the spark of, of what, what's going on with this program. The Jefferson Awards is something we launched uh, on the 1st of March. Um, it's an awards program that is to recognize and celebrate uh, the good that people do in the community. Now, when it comes to service in the community, I'm kind of talking to the choir here, because that is Rotary's background. Um, but in a community this size and in the 17 counties that we cover, there are, there are literally hundreds of thousands of people that do good things in the community every day. Some are the leaders of nonprofits, some are the leaders that are always getting the accolades, but the vast majority are people who are working under the radar at the Unsung Heroes, and that's what this program is all about. Uh, the Jefferson Awards is a national program. It's been going on for a number of years. I'm um, just going to let the uh, experts introduce themselves uh, to, to the national program first, hopefully. If you think about 1972, right, the country was going through a constitutional crisis post-Nixon and Watergate, and it was a country that was busily tearing itself down. And the founding vision of the Jefferson Awards was to tell the very best stories of the very best Americans, both nationally and locally, and use that power of storytelling with scale to elevate the best of the country and to inspire those who are doing amazing things to think that they could do more and to multiply the impact that they could have. Our third ceremony had 60 people, and we had the privilege of doing it in the original Supreme Court right under the dome in the Capitol. And the founding co-chairs were Jacqueline Kenny Onassis and Senator Robert Taft Jr. The original board of selectors was a who's who of top Americans. Muhammad Ali, Hank Aaron, the ball player, Neil Simon, the uh, playwright, Jack Valenti, special assistant to Lyndon Johnson, Charlie Bartlett, who was a nationally syndicated columnist, and on and on went like that. The people around the Bay Area that are making their mark on uh, the community through service are being honored for their efforts. The Jefferson Award winners for 2016 got their medals tonight. Our media partners are amazing. It's local television stations, radio stations, and newspapers all across the country that reach 100 million Americans every year. You know, this program is not a national program, uh, but it's got some local um, areas of it. There's about 30 markets nationwide that are doing a local program. Uh, and, and really the bottom paragraph, celebrating the outstanding service that people do in their communities with the hope of amplifying that service, getting more people involved, showing that it doesn't take a big check to help in the community, um, and sharing solutions that we may find here with other communities 
and looking for their solutions that may work here in our community. So that's the quick gist of the program. These are the people that won the national award from the beginning of time through now. Um, some of these winners, Cronkite, Rockefeller, Oprah, everybody will know those names. You'll know a lot of names on this list, but you know, looking at the first name there, I wanted to know who that was because I thought, you know, Jackie Kennedy and, and uh, Senator Taft are, are starting a program. How did this guy become the first winner of the Private Citizen Award? Um, this gentleman is pretty impressive. Um, his name was John Gardner, obviously, he's from California. That doesn't really matter. What really matters is he worked for and ran the Carnegie Foundation um, for a number of years for the advancement of education. If you know anything about the Carnegie Foundation, they just pour tons of money into helping the, the, the communities out. He also became the Secretary of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare under President Johnson. Um, one of the little programs that he had launched is called Medicare. Some of you may have heard of it. Um, essentially, there was no health uh, insurance or health availability for, um, for the elderly when they retired. They pretty much couldn't work anymore. They retired, and then they died quickly because of that. Um, he didn't like what was going on under the Johnson administration with the uh, Vietnam War, so he quit went back into the private sector, and he helped launch the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Um, so his, his service is pretty, pretty recognizable. Um, I'm going to just punch through this stuff really quick, get through that. Um, we decided we needed some partners in order to bring this program to town, and we were able to bring in both Capital Federal Savings and the FHL Bank. Um, we talked to them first about the program. Both of them liked it, decided to partner on the program, and, uh, you know, it was such an easy task that I couldn't figure out exactly why it was easy until we had our first conversation. First conversation I had with John um, was on camera, as well as Mark Yardley from FHLB, um, and we asked them both just one question to start. Usually it's an icebreaker, gets them talking about themselves a little bit and then we get into the meat, but they both gave us the answer that we needed or, or that we thought was the best answer after one question. Um, so shortest interviews in, in record uh, history of time. And hopefully it'll work. Uh-oh. It's contacting something. The fact that they're okay. giving back and that recognizing other volunteers in the community and seeing what people are doing for Topeka and Northeast Kansas was something that's very important to Capital Federal. It has been something that's important to Capital Federal and uh, our family for a long time to give back and do what you can to help out uh, those in need and uh, the community and trying to make it a better place you know, for all of us to live and work. And there are people out there who are doing great things that maybe go under the radar and unrecognized, but trying to promote those individuals and what they're doing and their stories hopefully it makes everybody else want to get involved and do what they can because it's really about doing what you can do it's not trying to compete with somebody else or keep up with somebody else but doing what you can to help out the community help out those in need and if we can do that in a small way it's something that you know, we wanted to be involved with <coughs> And then we talked to Mark. Mark had just spoken here uh, at Rotary at the time about some big money they gave to housing. And uh, so I met with him shortly after that. Um, and we asked him the same question, um, expecting to do some follow-up, but his answer is pretty similar. It's just in their DNA to do this kind of uh, uh, service. And I'm running out of battery. We want to, to recognize some of those people. We want to show their selflessness and, and their commitment to uh, whatever their passion is, there's a lot of people that have passions. And here, here at the bank, we have people involved in harvesters. We have people involved in their schools. You know, whatever their passion, we don't care what it, what it is. But you know, I shine a light on some people that are doing a lot of good things in Northeast Kansas and Topeka. It's, this is a national award uh, overall, but it allows us to take the chance to to say, hey, we have some good people here in the Midwest, and we'd like to tell you about them. Okay, so that tells you what, you know, what's in the DNA of those companies and why they partner with us, and we think it's a, a great match, um, because that's what we're trying to do in the community, is help lift it up from the bottom up, 
don't forget anybody, um, get everybody involved. We're giving away two awards each month. Um, I do not pick any of the winners. Um, nominations are sent in by local community people. That's you, that's why I'm here today. Um, and the nominations are sent through the National Foundation, <coughs> then they come to us for the local markets. They go to a selection committee and they pick the best of what they have in front of them, the best of the best that they can come up with. The program started in March. We go through February. And at that point, we'll have 24 to a month, which is uh, pretty good math. Um, and then we will select one each year to send along to the National Banquet um, in Washington, D.C. We send along a bio with them of why we awarded them locally, what we thought they did important. Um, and they represent Northeast Kansas then at the National Banquet, and they become eligible for a national award if they meet the criteria of, of the Jefferson Award Foundations. Um, what does a winner look like? A winner looks like everybody around this room, frankly. If I were to sit down and, and think about it, there's probably 75 people in this room that could qualify for this, for this award. Um, because you don't all work in the service sector, you work in regular jobs, banking, there's a lot of lawyers here, which scares me. Um, <laughs> but you go out and you do work every day, you put shoes on people's feet, you put coats on the kids' backs. Um, you go out and share history, you share uh, uh, education with, uh, with people all across the community. That's what this award is about, is to shine a light on the people that don't get the recognition for it. Um, uh, the first uh, local award winner I'm going to show you, um, he was just awarded last week. He's just a guy. He works at uh, Frito-Lay. don't know if I should name that or not. Uh, puts in about 80 hours in his job and just has a personal reason for why he started a local foundation to do some, to do some good. And I think it's an incredible first story to show everybody. Well, our next Jefferson Award winner is changing lives one step at a time and one pair of shoes at a time. Thank you. You're welcome. For the last three and a half years, Jerry Hudgens has been giving away new sneakers to kids in need. For some of these kids we deal with, uh, it might be the only new thing they get for the whole year. It all started when Jerry realized there was no organization dedicated to making sure kids in the Topeka area had shoes. So he started one and named it Soul Reason. A catchy name that has an even catchier motto. But from day one, it's always been put sneakers on their feet and smiles on their faces. Jerry collects all the shoes through sneaker drives, donations, and grants. Since starting Soul Reason, Jerry estimates he's given away <coughs> around 4,500 pairs of shoes. Giving them away at shoe drives or to just hearing of a kid in need after getting a call from a school social worker like Tana Cornell. I coined him my shoe guy. Um, so whenever I see a kid that looks like they're in need of shoes, um, I will call the family, make sure it's okay that we, we help them out, and then give Jerry a call um, and put in a request for some shoes. He's fantastic. Their organization's phenomenal. Within 24 to 48 hours, he's always here with a brand new pair of shoes. Given that this isn't even Jerry's job, just something he does in his spare time, when he's not working nearly 80 hours a week at a factory, or helping take care of his three kids, I had to know what pushes him. After I pushed him enough, you finally cracked. My, my kids involved in a serious accident a few years back. And, and, and I made a promise to God that if he healed my son and made him better, then I'll dedicate the rest of my life helping these kids with shoes. And that's what that's pretty much what I do in a nutshell. And it's a promise he's kept 4,500 times now and counting. What an incredible guy. Yeah, keeping his commitment to God, that's a big commitment to keep. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we first started talking about this stuff, I, I said, Jerry, there's got to be a big reason here. I mean, you give up so much time to do this. And he kept saying, it's just the right thing, it's just the right thing. And then he finally said that ending part. I said, Jerry, that's a story everyone needs to hear. And to learn more about how you... So that's an example of what we think are, are, are good quality Jefferson Award winners locally. Um, it's hard to argue with that story, um, touching the heart for most people. This is sort of the sample judging criteria that the committee um, goes through. The committee is chaired by uh, uh, Tammy Dishman, who runs the CapFed Foundation, and she's got about seven people that go through all these nominations. They scale them on a rubric. Um, it's very scientific. Um, and out of all the people that they get, um, they try to figure out who's rising to the top at any time. But this, you know, this covers everything you can do in the community, including employers who give their time, their employees paid time off 
to serve. There's more and more companies doing that nowadays. I'm proud to say we do that once a day, once a year. It's called our Founders Day, where we send our employees out to work um, in the community um, to, to help out the local nonprofits. Um, purpose for coming to you today um, is you have to have an ask. That's pretty much what I do for a living is I, I ask. But this ask is very simple. I need you to nominate people. Um, we're so heavily involved in service here. We know who the key people are that are out there doing the day and doing the day out work. We know which ones don't get recognition or maybe don't want recognition. Um, but we know who's involved and we need your help to, to make this uh, successful. Um, as I said before, we have two awards. We try to focus one on the Topeka area. We try to focus the other one on the northeast, um, northeast, north central Kansas area because that's our actual coverage area for the station. But in reality, the top two winners, uh, the top two nominees at any given point in time are the ones that we put forward. Um, and, uh, you know, frankly, people from outside of Topeka are outpacing uh, the nominations right now that Topeka Central is, so I need some help with that. Um, so that's where I also need you to share um, this idea and this program with other people, uh, because the more quality nominations we get, the better our winners look. And to me, the best thing that could happen here is we get the best story out. We send them to Washington, D.C., and they get some national <coughs> recognition. We are one of the smaller markets that, that is doing this, um, and, uh, but I don't think we're small in size. I just think we uh, don't tell people our stories enough. I think there are some great people locally. And the final thing I was going to ask for, which apparently I ran out of battery or something, so I'm not going to ask for it, um, <laughs> but in reality I am. You know, this is a program that is, is expensive to do. It's a 365-day-a-year promotion. There are things going on to promote this, to, to generate more nominations every single day. And CapFed and FHL Bank are, are incredible organizations, um, and they are supporting this because they think it's important. And what you guys can do as business leaders is next time you run into, you know, to John or Mark or, or Pat or, or Tammy, uh, somebody at, at CapFed or FHL Bank, um, just make it clear that you know that they're doing this. You know that they're supporting programs like this because this can help lift the community. Um, and the other slide that I was going to show you, which isn't there, um, was going to talk about the expansion of this. Now, if we can continue this program on, we started with just the private citizen awards. Okay, there's another category for elected officials, appointed officials, VIPs, CEOs, because they also, rather than, you know, a lot of them give checks, but a lot of them get down and dirty. They'll, they'll work and serve on the food lines at, at the kitchens and things along those lines. So there's a category for, for all of those. There's an under 35 category because the average person doesn't get involved in a lot of community service till they're 40 or more probably because your kids go away and you actually find out there's some extra time or some extra money. Um, but if you can get kids, teenagers started in community service, they're more apt to continue doing it for the rest of their life. So those are all additional awards that are given away on a national level. We'd like to add them to the, to the program here, um, but we're just launching with, uh, with the two service awards for local citizens right now. And uh, because I know sometimes we go over, I'm going to just end it quick. Say thank you very much for your time. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions if you have them. And if you don't, I'm more than happy to sit down. <laughs> thank you very much, Robert. That, as you can tell, this is very much in alignment. It's part of our core. It's part of what matters to us as Rotarians, so thank you. That's, that was a wonderful presentation. And it's wonderful to be able to see everyday people making a difference in the community, um, kind of those unsung heroes, and knowing that that happens and that, ha that that can happen, and we need to be able to showcase that. Um, I have a couple of things that I still need to do, and one is um, I would like to uh, do some red badge um, giveaways. So um, could Veronica Teichgraber come up? And I don't know if Norma Juma is also here. Veronica, come, come on down. Veronica has earned her red.
red badge, and we are so happy that you are joining us. She is a political strategist, a philosophy of this is a lot, <laughs> philosophy of politics journalist, a consultant, and philanthropist, and she is sponsored by Jen Wagner. So, welcome. <laughs> Has Norma joined us yet? No. Okay. We will have some more uh, at our next meeting, but we are very excited to be growing our club, growing um, the numbers, and um, having more community people want to join us um, on our journey of Rotary. Um, so, I am so pleased that you are here, Shirley, representing um, international and coming to our awesome <laughs> convention <coughs> and having and hopefully having a wonderful time we have we have brought you the spring weather um, and we are so excited to be able to showcase our community to all of our district um, and as a part of what we do to honor our speakers uh, we actually have you sign a book that we will be giving to Ross Elementary and so I will have you sign a book, and it will be one of my favorites, uh, Magic Tree House. I will have you sign that. And Robert, because we do that also with speakers, I will have you sign a Beetle is Shy. Um, so that we can, because you're not. <laughs> um, okay. So we are a little bit early, and that's and that's wonderful. Um, are there any other announcements you want to make? Okay, I'm going to say because I have I have the microphone, so I'm going to claim it for one whole second, and I'm I'm going to say that next year I have the great honor of planning all of the programs, and I am looking for some help. <laughs> um, so if you are interested in serving on a committee with me to help plan the programs for our next uh, year. I would love to hear from you. Um, I am very excited about that opportunity, um, but I'm also, I want to make sure that we are doing, we're going to be hosting programs as awesome as this um, into, into the next year. So um, I'll send out a group email, but if you are interested, please contact me because I would love. Terry, you? Anita, Anita. Yes. do you have an announcement? I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the people who have helped get this conference ready for Glenn. Yes. You've been fabulous. Wait till you see what Lee has made for centerpieces. <laughs> They're made out of tin cans. So thank you to everybody who served on the committee and just about everybody I'm looking at has done something in some way. We look forward to a great weekend. We are very excited about this weekend. And if for some reason you are not able to join us, I would also encourage you, we're going to have hundreds of people to come to this community and experience the awesomeness of Topeka. And so if you are walking down the street on your way to the pennant or the iron rail tomorrow night or anytime on Saturday, please, please welcome the Rotarians to Topeka because we are so excited about it. So our next week's meeting is at the Capitol Plaza in the Emerald, um, Emerald Room, and the program will be Jeff Carr's Health and Human Services. He's, services. He's going to talk about the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. Kathleen? Yeah, one quick little request or ask is nine of those visitors in the community are the Rotary Exchange students. Yes. We'll be staying at my house from Friday night through Sunday morning. Um, and uh, I also happen to be Saturday morning, uh, YWCA has a Girls on the Run 5K, and so I'm going to be busy with that. So I'm going to need some help with getting the kids transported downtown. So if any of you live out in southwest Topeka and can have some room to do that, I would love to hear from you. Okay, what time? Seven thirty, as my understanding, on uh, Saturday morning. Bright and early, seven o'clock, Saturday morning. Okay. Yana has an announcement. 
I like this. Everybody's <laughs> helping with the meeting. Um, actually, I like. I know lots of you already registered for the conference, but if uh, because there's so many things going on in the Pico community on Friday night, uh, if you are not able to come to the conference, but you're still welcome to come to the scavenger hunt. Um, all the businesses have been generous and agreed to donate 10% to Human Trafficking Service Project. So it would be a great fundraiser for uh, one of the projects that we've tried to kick on in our club. So uh, you're all welcome to come. It's free and just invite people, you know, because it's open to public as well. And we're going to have lots of uh, entertainment lined up. Jim Ramos has been amazing with finding some great talent that's going to be in the streets. And so you're all welcome to join. So what time is that? 7 to 9. And, and I'll just, I'll just put in one little clip when we get back. Uh, if you have not signed up for the Friday night um, <coughs> reception, come a little bit early before the 7 o'clock and be able to watch the Topeka High drum line. If you remember Blanche's installation, how phenomenal they were. They're going to kick off the scavenger hunt for us. So come back quarter till seven and join in the festivities. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I have a non-related item. Um, this is Unwind for the Greater Speaker Partnership is this evening at the Foundry Event Center from 5 to 7 p.m. So if you are a member, please join us. And if you're not a member or not sure, go ahead and give me a call and I can tell you. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody. This was the first time that I've done the meeting, and I appreciate all of the support and all of the energy that's in this room. I'm very excited to be um, to be involved with this weekend, and I'm very excited to be um, more actively involved in the leadership of, of our Rotary meeting. So, thank you. for the four-way test, plus one.